Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we are going to learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran about Al-Hajj. The, the verses are uh, almost divided into three different surahs. Some of the verses are some, some of the verses are in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, some other are in Surah Al-Imran, and the remaining surahs are in Surah Al-Hajj. So what I have done, I have collected all these surahs and placed in an order. So first we will see the history of the Hajj and history of the Kaaba, and then at certain point we will see that Hujjaj are arriving in uh, the place of Hajj, which is Kaaba. And then after that, the ayats are such that step by step, they describe the rituals, the manasik of the Hajj. What a person, when he walks into the Kaaba, what are the different things? From that point onward until going to Mina, Arafat and Musdalfa and coming back, and doing rest of the manasik. So they will be in order in this surah, in these uh, verses that I have compiled here. So inshallah we'll start with the first ayat here on the top of the page, which is ayat number 189 of Surah Al-Baqarah. In this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has responded a question that some people may have asked Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the ayat starts with Auzu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim yas'aluna ka 'anil ahilla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this ayat and mentioning that O oh Prophet these people are asking you about the new moon al ahilla is the new moon when the moon appears first time in the in the month so why are they asking O oh Prophet usually whenever this kind of a statement comes in the Quran. Prophet doesn't have answer or he doesn't answer. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the reason and the response of the of the question. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding, and then in the ayat when being revealed, Prophet is going and, and reciting in front of the people. So the answer is that these people are asking you what is so important about the new moon. And I think this was their observation of the people who were living at that time, um, Quraysh and Kuffar and Mushrikeen, that why so much importance is given in, to the new moon in Islam. Why they start fasting with the new moon and why they start doing the Hajj with the new moon or few other things. So they are asking why it is so important to be following the new moon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers them by saying, Qul, say O Prophet, hiya mawaqito, in this new moon, there are timing and marking of the time, which means you start a month, then you go to the next month, and you can measure how much time has gone. And then you measure the month, and then you measure the years, and that's how the timing marking can be done with the new moons. Number one, and Allah says for Linnas, it's for all the people. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding that this is a calendar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined using the new moon appearing after every 29 or 30 days or so. The other important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the same ayat, wal hajj, and there is in this new moon the sign that time for Hajj is arrived. So how important this Hajj is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has included this with the marking of the calendar, lunar calendar. <clears throat> so this was the answer that was given in two words, that it is a mawaqit. Mawaqit is a, like a waqt, timing, marking of the timing, and al-Hajj. <clears throat> Then we will go to the next ayat, which is Ali Imran, ayat number 96. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala briefly mentions the history of the Kaaba by saying, Inna awwala baytin. Indeed, 
the first of the house. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word bait. Bait means a house. And then he continues using in several ayat this word bait. And then at one point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says baiti, my house. So it became very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving such a significance to this house which is the Kaaba. So Allah says, Wodi'a linnasi. It has been appointed, it has been set, it has been decided. What is this bait? Lillazi, it is that bi Bakkata is in the valley of Bakka. Bakka was the older name of Makkah and also the valley is called valley of Bakka. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> is pointing the location of this uh, house by saying that the house, the first house of worshipping, which is Allah calling his own house, is the house which is physically located in the valley of Bakka. And then Allah mentions two qualities of this house. First one is Mubarakan. This is a blessed house. Mubarak is a very common word. It's a blessed house. Number two, lil alamin, And this is a source of guidance. The guidance will start from here. Guidance will spread. Hidayat will spread for all the world, the people, all the mankind. The guidance will initiate from there. So it is a very significant place for worshipping. People will come there. They will, and the guidance will go from here to rest of the world. So those are the two qualities of this house Allah has mentioned. Then we go to the next ayat, Al Imran, ayat number 97. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now defining what Al Hajj is and why it is important. Walillahi, the ayat starts, and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alan nasi upon the mankind. So it is an obligatory requirement upon the mankind for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hijjul bayti. The hajj of this house. Al bayt the house. Now, because the word hijjul bayt is being defined here, what is hijj? Or what is hajj? Hajj in English we call pilgrimages. And the pilgrimage is that in any faith or any religion, if a number of people travel, take a journey to go to the place which they regard as a sacred place, that is called Hajj. In Islam, the sacred place is Makkah, Kaaba. So when you go, take a journey from your home and travel to reach there, and then perform some rituals that is called the Hajj, a pilgrimage. So Allah says that it is upon the mankind, it is due for the mankind that they should go for Hajj for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah mentions one condition here, Manis tata'a ilayhi sabila. Sabila means path, journey, traveling. It is based on a condition. Istita'at is that affordability. Affordability is in two different ways. You are in physically good condition to take a long journey, number one. Number two, you can financially afford the journey and staying there. If you meet being a Muslim, these two conditions that it is upon you to take this journey and go for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform the Hajj. So that is mentioned by Allah in the Quran. So this is to be taken seriously. <clears throat> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions again, now this time he is defining what is this bait, what is the significance and what is that to be done and not done very importantly. In Al-Hajj ayat number 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he commanded his prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to initiate the process of building the Kaaba and performing the Hajj. Wa'idh bawwana, 
Allah said that when we designated for Ibrahim, Ibrahim was a messenger of Allah, Makan al Bayti, the physical location of this house, where my house will be built. And Ibrahim alayhi salam traveled to Makkah, to Kaaba, along with his son and wife. And that is where he settled down initially. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pointed to him that this is the place you have to build my house, al Bayt. And then very important thing that was said that Allah tushrik bi shaya. Make sure, shay means anything at all. No shirk is done in that house that is being built, that is being designated for me, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a very basic condition and it happened, it continued as oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then slowly it became a place where the local people started putting the idols there. And then at one time they all were removed and alhamdulillah since then, there is no shirk which is committed in that house. <clears throat> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse of Al-Baqarah, ayat number 125, is talking about two uses of this house. Allah says, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly talking about himself that he is doing that. And when we made this house, the house, this Makkah, for the mankind, for the people, two things. One is masabatan here, Quran is used, and the word is second is amna. What is masabatan? Masabatan is a place in Arabic where two meanings are used. One is you gather in a place. A place of gathering is called masabatan. Or a plus place where you come and go. You come and go, you travel, you journey, you come there. You stay, you go back. Then either you come back there again or somebody else comes back. So that is masabatal linnasi for the mankind. The second thing Allah mentioned, what is this? Amna, the place of peace, the place of sukoon, the place of aman. So those are the two things that, and we see that constantly throughout the air people come and go people come and go and, and same people sometimes different people keep coming and going and it's very peaceful and we all know how much peaceful the place is once you enter into the Kaaba then in the next ayat of surah al-baqarah ayat number 127 the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning something which is the beginning of the Hajj definition. Wa is the Yarfao Ibrahimul Kawa Aidam in Al Bayti wa Ismail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing in the Quran the time when this house was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son who had grown up to be a little older. Wa is Yarfao. Yarfao is to rafa'a means to raise. And raise is meaning here to build the walls of the Kaaba. Al-Qawaid is the foundation. So when Ibrahim was building the, the walls of the Kaaba, the structure of the Kaaba, on the foundation, min al bayt of my house, of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why Ismail and Ismail was working as a young boy with him. They made a dua there, both of them. What is the dua? Three words are mentioned, Rabbana, our Lord. So both father and son are making dua by saying, our Lord, taqabbal minna. Taqabbal is a, is a command, is a request. Accept this from us. This effort of building this house by your command we have accomplished, we have built this structure. Accept, please accept from us. Innaka anta samiul alim. Indeed, you are the one who hears everything and you are knowledgeable and aware of everything. They continued their dua, and that is the very important part here. Rabbana, they are saying, Our Lord, Waj alna muslimaini. First, they are saying, Make us, two of us, to submit to you. Musliman is a plural. 
two of us and there are only two, one father and one son. So they are making dua, O oh Allah, our Lord, make us submit to you. Okay. Laka, laka means to you or for you. Wamin zurriyatina. And also our progeny, our children, our generations that will follow, make them also submit to yourself. Muslim atallak, those who will submit to you, they will obey you, they will follow your commandments and your guidance. Then they are making a very important dua after that, watching, wa arina manasikana. Okay. Manasik, Manasikana means our rituals. <coughs> it's a plural. And ritual. What is ritual? Allah, the ayat says, wa arina. They are saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show us, teach us, guide us, show us how we perform the Hajj. Manasike Hajj are the rituals of the Hajj. And then we will see step by step. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thought that when you arrive in, in Kaaba, what is the first thing you do? When you arrive in Arafat, what you do? Then you arrive in Muzdalfa, what you do? When you come back, you sacrifice. These are called the rituals or the manasike hajj. So they made dua that, oh Allah, we have built this house. What to do now? So show us, teach us. So we can follow and our progeny, our generation can follow and perform the Hajj to come to this place and obey you. And we seek forgiveness. Forgive us if we have made any mistake. Indeed, O Allah, you are a Tawwab, accepts the repentance of the people and you are kind. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail's dua in al Surah al-Baqarah ayat number 125 which is the next one. Allah says wa ahidna. Ahidna will translate to different ways. One is that we commanded. Allah is saying we commanded Ibrahim and Ismail. The other one is that we took a covenant. We made a, a, an agreement with Ibrahim and Ismail to do certain things. What is that? Ila Ibrahima wa Ismaila. We did this ahead with Ibrahim and Ismail. What are you going to do now? First thing is that antakhira baytia. First thing, Ibrahim and Ismail, you are going to do. Allah is telling them. You keep my house. That the word is Baytiya. Ya is mine. This house, this Kaaba which you have built is my house. You are going to keep it pure and clean. Tahira is from Tahara. Tahara means to keep. Keep pure and clean in two different ways. First, keep it physically clean. Number two, there should not be any mix of shirk and kufr in this house. So in both ways, make sure this house of me, Allah is now calling the word Baytiya, Mera, my house, keep it pure and clean for four different things to do there. First thing, Litta'ifina, for those people who will perform the tawaf, those people who will go around it, you have to keep, make sure this house is clean and ready for them. The important thing is that Allah is calling Baytiya my house and the Tawaf is the only place, the Tawaf is done only in this place. All other masajids are also houses of Allah, but Tawaf cannot be done in those houses, in the masajids. This is the only unique place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you go around the structure which is called the center or the Kaaba. No other place you can do a tawaf. This is the, so Allah is saying this special house of mine is going to be something that people will be coming and do, going to do the tawaf going around in circle. Number one. Number two, wala kefina. Some people will come and sit here and do the etikaf, which means they will sit for some time 
and they do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will stay for a few hours here, few hours there. That will be the etikaf and this will be the place for them. Number three, warrukka is sujood. Number four, two are they will perform ruku here and they will perform sajda here. So these are the four functions and as we can see that when we go for hajj, these are the only four things which are done inside the Kaaba. There is no dinner served or there is nothing else which is done there or no party takes place or no worldly things are talked about. These are the only four functions which are performed when we enter the Kaaba. In the next ayat of Surah Al-Hajj, ayat number 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re-emphasizing but he is using a different word by saying, وَتَّخِرْ بَيْتِيَا And make sure you keep it clean, my house. First word is same, لِتْتَوْعِفِينَ Second word is قَائِمِينَ قَائِمِينَ is those people who stand for the prayer. Qayam or Qayam. So they stand up for the prayer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keep my house clean for them, which means they are performing the prayer. And again, وَرْرُكَيْ sujood is included also. They will do in, during their prayer, the ruku and sajida to complete their prayer. So now, after house is built and there is conversation that has taken place between Ibrahim alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear how to proceed, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Ibrahim alayhi salam in surah al-Hajj ayat number 27. fin nasi bil hajj. Now stand up and proclaim, make the announcement, like do the azan, call the people to come for hajj. So now Ibrahim alayhi salam's duty is, to step by step are moving, that now Kaaba has been built, its purpose has been defined, its functions have been defined. Now the next activity is that Ibrahim salam is commanded that go and invite the people, call the people. Azzin is a proclamation, open announcement, just like you call Adhan. Invite people to come for the sake of Hajj here. Finnasi among the mankind. Now Allah further says, Ya Atuka Rijalan. These people who, who will hear your call, they will come for Hajj on their feet. They will come walking, who, those who will live nearby, they can come walking to perform the Hajj. Or if they don't live nearby, they live far away, they will use the means of travel. And wa'ala kulli damirin. Damirin is a um, camel. So they will ride on the camel, even though these are weak camels or strong camels, but they will. So that what I'm saying, it's a means of journey. Use any means of journey, and at that time it was Dhamir, that was the camels. But any means of journey you can take, do come to this house. Number two, Yatina, right after that, the next part of the ayat, it says, Yatina, the people will come once the announcement has been made. People will come, min kulli fajjin amik. Fajjin from every, min kulli from every side, everywhere. Kulli fajjin amik is translated to from a deep valley. It doesn't matter where there are or from distant places. Wherever they are, and we know that the journey is done from far, far places. People go there for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all these things are the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we fulfill when we go for hajj. Now, in the next ayat, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 197, the hajj starts. The journey starts. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from now into the next several ayahs, step by step, is telling us how to perform the hajj. <coughs> First thing, Allah says, Al-hajjo ashhurun ma'lumat. Ashhurun is a plural of shahrun. Shahrun means one month. Ashhurun means months. Ma'lumat means known. Allah says the months of the hajj are well known, which means 
now we think that it's a only one month but before it will take two to three months for the people to travel to stay longer they didn't go and come back in four days they stayed there longer time and they go back this whole process may take several months so allah says the months of the hajj are well known now then allah says faman farada so whosoever decides that he is ready to go for hajj whoever makes it obligatory upon him that he is going to perform the hajj that's the meaning of faman farada who has made it fard upon himself fi hin na in these months in the months of traveling what is supposed to do fi hin al hajj just to go for the journey of the hajj he has to do certain things first of all fala rafasa the every word is coming with the la means don't do this thing rafasa is the intimate relation between husband and wife if they, they both are traveling for the purpose of the hajj then in that duration they are forbidden to have the intimate relation even though they are husband and wife that's the meaning of rafasa fala rafasa there is no relationship wala fusuqa fusuqa is the plural fus fis is the disobedience of allah subhanahu wa taala no disobeying allah subhanahu wa taala when you have started and reached for the journey of the hajj make sure you stay submitting the to the commands of allah subhanahu wa taala all the time during the hajj third thing wala jidala no dispute no fighting no argument and it is amazing to see that in the kaaba thousands of people enter and leave every hour and nobody argues with another another person nobody pushes any other person nobody you know complains to any other person absolutely no dis- no dispute takes place inside there and it is the peace of aman allah subhanahu wa taala has defined so so he is instructing the mankind make sure that somebody may step on your foot somebody may you get pushed by someone no dispute no argument just keep going continue doing the hajj okay then uh, the next ayat of surah al baqara <coughs> ayat number 197 <coughs> allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding instructing the person who is getting ready to go for hajj by telling him is a plural wa tazawwadu and make sure you take the provision with you you have enough means to go for hajj you have enough resources physically your money any other to complete your journey and while you are staying there you have sufficient funds sufficient provision sufficient money so you don't have to beg you don't have to steal tazawwadu make sure you take zad e rah you know what is needed in the in the journey but allah says there is a better provision that you should should take with you which is the taqwa khair az zad e taqwa the best of the thing that you can take with you is the complete disobedience uh, complete obedience and taqwa of allah subhanahu wa taala so make sure that you stay muttaqi all the time once once you have started the journey for the hajj allah says wa taquni and make sure you fear me this ni is pointing to allah subhanahu wa taala it means me have taqwa of me have fear of me ya ulil albab or those of the people who have any sense of understanding allah is calling al ulil albab the wise people the people of wisdom the people of understanding who have taken upon themselves the journey to go and perform the hajj and the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala so now the man has taken enough provision with him and he has journeyed he has arrived in kaaba the next ayat is surah Uh, Al Imran, ayat number ninety-seven. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Now you have reached at the door of the Kaaba. Woman dakhalahu, so whosoever now has entered it in my house, kana amina. He has become under the peace and protection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that now you are safe, you are protected, you are blessed, and all the blessing of Allah will be upon you, the aman will be upon you. Now you have entered into the Kaaba. That's the first step. You have arrived there with provision, and now you are walking into the Kaaba. So, what are you supposed to do? Allah mentioned that first thing you have to do is do the tawaf there. Okay? And you have a haram and you have to do the tawaf and you do the prayers or whatever you can do. You do all these things. Then Allah says, look at one more thing there. Fihi ayatum bayyinat. Or then after Allah says, maqamu Ibrahim. In it, in this place, which is the peaceful place, Allah says there are very clear manifest signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you, if you ponder, the, the, the biggest thing that I noticed that when I was doing the tawaf, that maybe my steps are on the same earth where the Prophet ﷺ did the tawaf. How fortunate I am that I am walking in the same circle with the, where the Prophet himself walked. These Maybe my steps are on the same earth that he walked on. That's a very big blessed thought that comes to the mind. Allah says, Fihi And there are many, many signs that you can see of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is pointing to one of them, which is the Maqam Ibrahim, which is the station of Ibrahim. And we all know that when we will go for Hajj, we see that station of Ibrahim, where Ibrahim al-Islam's footstep is in, the, in that case. So Allah pointing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah in ayat number 125, Take the station of Ibrahim nearby to perform some prayer, to perform two rakats or four rakats, whatever is possible. This maqam Ibrahim, the, the station of Ibrahim, Ibrahim used to be a big stone where his footprints are there. And they, they have put a glass case around it. And it used to be before touching the wall of the Kaaba because he stood on that to build the wall of the Kaaba. But then the government has moved it back to make room for the tawaf, easy tawaf. And then they keep moving it back. But wherever it is, try to make two rakats. It's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muwattakhizu take. The maqam Ibrahim as the place of performing some prayer. If you cannot pray near that, go all the way in the back in the direction of maqam Ibrahim and perform two rakats or whatever you can perform. And you can definitely find the room towards the end. Uh, there's plenty of room there. Then once you have done these things, then a next, what is the next thing? Ayat number Al-Baqarah, Ayat number 158, Surah number uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, now you exit from one of the gates to walk where? In the Safa wal Marwata. Walk out, you will, and go up, you will reach where Safa and Marwa are. Min Allah, these are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two hills, Safa and Marwa, are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the next step of the Hajj. After we have done the Tawaf, then we go to Safa and Marwa. So Allah is step by step is telling that these are Sha'ir. Sha'ir are signs of Allah, Nishani of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Faman Hajj al Baita. So whoever has gone for performing the Hajj of my house, Awe Tamara, or he has gone to perform the Umrah. Fala Junaha alayhi, there is no sin upon him. Then he goes and does the tawaf of Safa and Marwa. What is the tawaf of Safa of Marwa? Go between the two hills seven times. That, that makes three and a half circles, three and a half round trips. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here there that some people may have thought that this is not part of the Hajj or this is why we do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there is no sin after you have done the tawaf of the Kaaba and perform the, the two rakats or some rakats in front of or next to the Maqam Ibrahim. The next step is that you climb up, stay, they have stairs now 
I go and walk between Safa and Marwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now saying, Fala junaha alayhi, there is no sin upon him. An yatta wafa bihima, hima is for two, Safa and Marwa, that they go and walk between the Safa and Marwa. Now, in the next uh, ayat, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 198. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell me the background first, is mentioning a very special case. Someone who, they, who went there with full preparation, with full provision, enough money and enough. For some reason, if something happens, he loses, for example, his wallet, all his money is gone or something happens there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that <clears throat> your intent for the hajj uh, to come here was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you had made all the preparation before coming here and if you find yourself, some incident happens and you find yourself lost, you lost your money, you lost provision or any thing, Allah is saying instead of begging or stealing, do the following thing. Laisa alaykum junahun. There is no sin upon you. Antabtagu fadlam mir rabbikum. That you go out and look for some work to earn some money so you can sustain yourself. So if, if limited provision is given, limited permission is being given here, that if you are in a situation like that, then it is better than you go and find some employer and who you can do some work for him and earn some money so then you can continue your hajj. So that's the meaning. Tab tahu, look for fadlam, the provision and fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so that is, now, now you are done with the Kaaba. Next thing is that, the next ayat, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 198. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, now <clears throat> it's the time to leave the Kaaba and head for Mina. You go to Mina and you stay there. Until the day of Arafat comes, which is known day, which is the tenth of the Al ninth of Al Hijra, um, the calendar, ninth of the month is the day of Arafat. Allah says, "Faida Afat tum min Arafatin." Go to Arafat. Go into the area which is defined as the Araf Arafat. What is to be done in Arafat? Basically, all you do is make du'a there. You perform Zohar and Asr combined and then you leave. If you miss Arafat, you miss the Hajj. If you arrived in Arafat, you have done the Hajj. So even this is such a significant thing that on that particular day, your physical presence in that area is the Hajj. If it is not there, you haven't done the Hajj. So some people who get sick and they are in the hospital and they have arrived from other countries, what the government does is that they, they, they put him in the ambulances and the ambulance drives to the, to the Arafat. So you will see that a very long line of the vehicles, ambulances carrying these patients arrive in the field of Arafat. So they can be physically present and then by the end of the day they go back. So being in the Arafat is the Hajj regardless. So this is a good uh, activity that government has done that those people who, who get sick there and cannot move or travel while they are in Makkah, then the government brings them in the Arafat to perform or be there. So the Hajj is completed. Then Allah says after that, then you leave the Arafat, you depart from the Arafat before the sunset towards Muzdalfa. So this ayat is talking about Muzdalfa, next one. Fadhkuru Allah, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indal Mash'aril Haram. Mash'aril Haram is another name of Muzdalfa. Okay? Just like uh, Masjidul Haram is the name of the Kaaba. Mash'ar al-Haram is the name of Muzdalfa. There is a masjid there uh, which was built later. But that field, that area where you are reaching there in the Muzdalfa is called Mash'ar al-Haram. Sign of Allah, Nishani of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you arrive there 
and Allah says, Fazkurullah, do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You perform the Maghrib and Isha prayer there together, then you stay, you want to perform Fajr. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fazkuruhu, and remember him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kama hadakum, as he has guided you. Okay, then what happens? In the next ayat, on the last page, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 199. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out something here which was being done before Islam. Allah stopped that. Some people of the Quraysh, the rich people especially, when they will go from Arafat to Muzdalfa, after staying in Muzdalfa in Mashar al-Haram overnight, when the morning comes, from there, they will go back to their homes. They thought we are done with the Hajj. Allah is saying, your Hajj is not done. You cannot do that anymore. So Islam stopped that practice. So that's what this ayat is saying. Thumma afidu. Then depart, leave. Min haisu afadan nas. From the place to the place where everybody is going. So they think that the only poor man can go back to the Mina from uh, Muzdalfa. We are rich men, we can go back to our houses. Allah says, no, go back exactly where everybody is going back from the Mash'ar al-Haram. So this ayat is telling them, and obviously uh, um, Islam applied this ayat and stopped the practice of those Quraysh who are going to their homes before going back to Mina. Then Allah says, while you are going back from Mash'ar al-Haram, to Mina, do what? Istaghfar. Wastaghfirullah. Practice the istaghfar at that time. First you arrive there, do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have spent the night there and are departing now for Mina, do the istaghfar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Quranic injunction. Quranic ayats are clearly defining all these manasike hajj, the rituals of the hajj. How should we perform the hajj? Then Allah says, now you have gone back to Mina. The next ayat in, of the Surah Al-Hajj, ayat number 29, is telling you about certain things that you are going to do when you have arrived back in the Mina from the Muzdalfa. You, are, you have been wearing your ihram for a few days. You are dirty. You, are, you, are, you, are, you have unclean things. Allah is saying, now go and clean up yourself. Summal yaqdu tafasahum. Then whatever is left, do that. Clean up yourself. Take shower. Wal yu'ufu nuzurahum. And whatever vows you have to make or whatever you have done, complete them. And what includes in there? First thing you have to do is do the sacrifice there after you get there. Wal Yattawafu bil baytil atiq, and then when you are there, you have cleaned up yourself, you have sacrificed, you have to go and perform the tawaf ziyarat the same day, before the end of the day. You have to go wherever you are staying in Mina, from there, that's why baytil atiq, the ancient house, the word of baytil atiq is mean the ancient house, which is the Kaaba. So you have to go to Kaaba from there, from the Mina, after you have gone and done the sacrifice, come to Kaaba, do the Tawaf, then go back to Mina. So this is what this ayat is saying, certain things, that this is what you have to do. It is now much easier because you don't have to go because most of the sacrifice is done by the, by the team that takes you there. Before you had to go yourself, when first time I went, I had to go myself to the place of sacrifice from Mina, and that's some distance, walking there. Check, I, I slaughtered the, the goat myself, and then I came back. So that time is now saved, because they do the sacrifice for you, your, 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 your group, your team that takes you. So you go and do the tawaf of Baitul Atiq, and then come back to Mina. Allah says, Dalika, all these things, next ayat of Surah Al Hajj, ayat number 32, this is all that you have to do. So, whoever has paid due respect has done all the sha'ir, all these things 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the rites, the, word, the, the rituals, the symbols that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the person has done, then this is the taqwa al this is the taqwa, this is the purification of the hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that. <clears throat> then in the next ayat of Surah Al-Hajj, ayat number 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about the sacrifice, the animal that you have to sacrifice. Allah says, Lakum fiha manafi'u. In these cattle, in these animals, there is benefit for you. You benefit from the camels, benefit from the, the, the goats and sheep, you draw their milk, you ride these camels. There are benefits. Mankind takes the benefits. But then Allah says, Ila ajalim musamman. Up to a certain time, you can benefit from these animals. Then, thumma, because now you have arrived back in the Mina. Then at that time, mahil loha, mahil is called the place of sacrifice. The destination of these animals and these things that you have brought with you or they have been arranged for you they have now to be brought to the slaughterhouse that's where the slaughtering takes place that's where qurbani is done hilal baytil atiq this is very close this place is close to the where the house of allah baytil atiq is then in the next ayat which is the ayat number 200 of surah al-baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out something very important which is the background of this ayat is that that this is now now hajj was being done before islam and most of these rituals that ibrahim salam had propagated were being followed except some impurities had been added in there one of the wrong thing that was added in this that now after that people have done all these things the hujjaj before islam they were coming from outside and within inside, they will now sit down and do the party. And they will talk how great our forefathers were, how you know strong they were, how they were. They were talking about their families, their forefathers, their all kinds of things. This was their practice of doing these kind of things, having good time, having party. Allah forbade that in the Islam. Faida ayat says, Faida qadaitum manasikakum. When you have completed your rituals, when you have done all that is needed to be done to perform the hajj, qadaitum is completed. You have completed all your manasik, all your rituals, then this is what you do. Fadhkurullah. Now, do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as you are going to stay there. Ka zikrikum aba'akum The way you used to mention your forefathers. The way you used to tell each other the stories of your forefathers. Don't do that anymore. Spend that time. Do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For, and these are typically the ayam tashriq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aw ashadda zikra, or even more remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for rest of the time you are staying there, keep yourself busy with the remembrance and zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 203, he mentions that you can stay there for a long time, you can stay there two days, and if for some reason, if you don't have time or you have some activity, you can leave the area. But as long as you stay, do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wazkurullah. All the hujjaj are being told, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi ayyamim ma'adudat. In those days which are counted which are known and these are the ayam at tashriq faman ta'ajjala fi yawmani so whosoever is going to rush leave in two days fala isma alai there is no sin upon him he can leave 
ومن تاخرا اور سم ون ہو وانٹس ٹو ڈیلے اسٹے دیر لانگر فلا اسما علیہ دیر از نو سن اپان ہم دیٹ ہی ہیز ٹو لیو لمن اتقا فور ہم ہو ہیز تقوا فا اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سو دس از دی لاس سٹیپ بیفور یو آر لیونگ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی گائیڈنگ یو سٹیپ بائی سٹیپ فرام دی بگننگ ٹو دس پوائنٹ آل دی ریچولس آل دی مناسک آل دی ایکٹیویٹیز دیٹ یو ہیو ٹو پرفارم وائل یو آر آن دی حج So these are the verses that I mentioned in the beginning are spread over three different surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran and Surah Al-Hajj and I placed in this order so we can see one after another the step of these Hajj that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon those who submit and believe him. So inshallah with that we will stop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help us, give, give us tawfiq to understand the Qur'an and also have mercy upon those who are there for Hajj performing now. Sadaqah.